Hello, welcome to Local Chats. I'm Lewis Adams, and I'm here with a returning guest. Hello, Hazel Edwards. Hello, it's very good to be chatting to you again, even if I am in Melbourne and you are in Bendigo. You get to uh, be the subject of a couple of different firsts for this series. Uh, one, you're the first returning guest, and two, the first Skype recording. Oh. But, uh, it is a piece of technology that I've been wanting to use, but this is the first time I've had the chance to actually use it for uh, this podcast. This is pretty exciting. It's history. <laughs> well, I'm just thrilled to be a part of your history because I'm uh, technologically challenged, but across the last few years, I've really learned how to use Skype because I've had co-authors, one of whom was in New Zealand yep. and one of whom is in Melbourne, but a good hour's uh, travel away in Pekka, and so I've learned to collaborate on Skype, and I find it a great asset for a writer. Yeah, for sure, and the, the visual component as well, I feel, is a step up over, say, a phone, telephone call. Before we get into the main topic, how have you been? Well, I think I saw you last at the festival in Bendigo. Yep, the Bendigo Writers Festival, yeah. Yes, the Bendigo Writers Festival, which I thought was a very inspiring uh, regional festival. I say regional in the sense that uh, not just the geography, but the fact that everybody appeared to work in together, that the local produce, the local ideas, the local educators, uh, entertainers, students, etc., all seemed to come together. And I thought that was a great credit to Bendigo. Genuinely impressed. Yeah. And particularly with the turn up on the Youth Day to have, uh, say, a thousand young people in an audience who actually asked questions and were engaged was really, really stimulating. So it was a positive experience all around, I'd yes. say, yeah? Did you find it was good to speak to a lot of the other writers while you were in town? Oh, that's always the bonus yeah. um, of a festival for a writer. Other people might call it gossip, we call it research. <laughs> finding out what else is going on um, and I did talk with some other uh, writers and illustrators as you tend to do about the projects that I'm involved in at the time and one of them was Hijabi Girl which we're going to talk about now and there was quite uh, considerable interest in that in the local region too. So let's talk about Hijabi Girl. It's, a, it's another collaboration for you. I like learning new things Yep. And one of the best ways, particularly as you get older, because you don't want to write a novel about a novel, it's writing a novel about writing a novel, <laughs> is to uh, collaborate with someone who has specialised knowledge in a fear, completely different cultural field. And that's what has happened with the Hijabi Girl, which has actually taken almost four years. Tell me about your collaborator for this Erske Alken. It took me a while to pronounce her name correctly, and this is something we picked up with our character in Hijabi Girl too. It's very important to get people's names right, particularly across cultures. And so our character of Melek, most people have trouble pronouncing her name. I met her at an author talk, a literary professional development. And she was the animated educator librarian in the audience who was extremely well read and who talked to me, uh, she's very hard to say no to, uh, <laughs> about coming to her then school. At that stage, she was a librarian working at one of the Islamic schools, uh, kindergarten through to year 12, and they hadn't had an author there before and she wanted me to visit them. And so I eventually did. And what she wanted was to have a, a very animated, very good um, educator, communicator of ideas. And she'd been running book parades for book week and her students couldn't find any books where there was a character wearing a hijab in the story itself. And she said, could I write one? And I said, no, you write it yourself because <laughs> you know what you're talking about. I don't wear a hijab. I'm not of that culture. Um, why don't you do it? So we went backwards and forwards for a while and then we agreed to do it together. But before we started, I pitched it to a number of publishers and the proposal, it's had more rejections than any other project I've ever put up. The reason was not our story, it was not our collaboration. It was the fact that every time there was a news item on terrorism, terrorism equaled Islam equaled let's not do that book which was not good for us but was actually a justification for us continuing because we really felt that if people can go 
book within a book, particularly a children's book for the length of that book and perhaps beyond, they get a better idea of somebody else's life and they're a bit more tolerant about, of, of differences. And so we thought, and also literature enables you to discuss issues that might be sensitive. So we decided that we would set the story with a very vibrant eight-year-old, Melek, who wears a hijab. And I've had to learn a great deal about the rationale for hijabs, etc., cetera, and the, and the beliefs behind uh, the particular culture. Erske took us to an iftar. I didn't know what an iftar was. It's a street festival during Ramadan where guests are welcomed and thanked. Our family went. Now, our family are all redheads and don't wear hijabs. <laughs> um, so we were a bit noticeable. We could not have been treated with greater hospitality. And so our families became involved and um, I think it's been a great cultural enrichment on both sides. As a result of that, we kept pitching our story and had uh, international rejections, local rejections, and in the end I decided that it was important to have a story like this to go out. We have a character who wants to be running a girls Aussie Rules footy team eventually. She's mad keen on reading. She's in a mainstream school with three other strong characters, including Zach who plays soccer and has a pet rat who becomes a reading rat permissible in the classroom only as long as somebody's reading to the rat. Didn't matter which language or which story. Great teacher, a Vietnamese girl, Tian, who's very good at drawing. Now we wanted to have the illustrative component. So our actual illustrator is Serena Geddes, who used to work for Disney. Oh. And I think the cover that she's done has been a great asset. So it's been a significant learning experience. The reason we wanted to use the football aspect is that my co-writer is an avid fan of a particular football club that has red and black in it and she has a color-coded hijab to wear to the footy and we made this uh, tendency with the mother of our character who is a fashionista who designed footy color-coded hijabs we have a barbie doll who's got a hijab outfit and what we found was all the things that we were inventing for our characters were subsequently happening <laughs> in mainstream life so we must have been on the right track we have lily who is very keen on dress-ups and uh, is a bit keen on the history as well so we've got the four characters who have the potential for a series i think but at the moment it's just the first story and it's suitable for eight-year-olds up the reason we didn't make it a picture book as we first intended was it's a very expensive exercise to do a picture book and we thought this might have more mainstream interest. It's being launched in Melbourne at by the Hume Council which is an area that has a great many people, very multicultural area, they're very kindly launching it at the Craigie Burn Library and suddenly we've had massive interest in it. and the title of Hijabi Girl, which was not our original title, has turned out to be an asset rather than a negative as it was in the beginning. One thing that I've noticed is the um well, the use of the, the Aussie Rules football, this is a story about culture and the, the meeting of cultures in a way. And what part of Australian culture is better than <laughs> Aussie Rules? Well, I have to say at this stage, I have virtually no knowledge of Aussie Well, I do now. <laughs> right? I don't even barrack for a team. My co-writer, uh, and in, to a certain extent, the character of Melek is in part based on her avid reader, vibrant character, yep. uh, wears a hijab, barracks for football. There are elements, uh, as with any story, of, of the creator in the characters. But I wanted to make sure that the quite strong boy character, Zach, is the one uh, who is a little contrary, and he's a soccer fan. Uh, now, he's not keen on reading at all. And so there's a bit of a tension between them, but it's um, believable. And so uh, we've got soccer in there as well. You'll notice on the front cover we've got the soccer ball. How do you go about finding the common ground, meeting all the different cultural influences? I deferred to Erske on anything to do with the culture. Yeah. Um, she took me to the Immigration Museum and explained one of the exhibitions that was there. My husband and I also went 
to the Islamic Museum, which we found fascinating in terms of the maths and uh, scientific history in there as well. But in terms of the visuals in the book, the, the most challenging aspect was for our illustrator, Serena, who was aware that she needed to make the dress modest. And so she had to lengthen the dress on our Melek character, who's in the hijab. She had to lengthen the sleeves. And so things like that have been very important to accommodate in terms of, and, and the information has come out, and it says Uzge has checked what was correct. But it was the terminology, and that was why, uh, particularly in relation to food and halal, so that's why we've got a section at the back of what these words mean. And we put hijab, halal, Muslim, and Ramadan. Now, we could have put a lot of other terms in, yep. but we just covered those. But we've got quite extensive teacher notes that are free and downloadable from my website. So I think that will be helpful. But I think it's the sort of book that could be shared beyond the 8 plus age group. It is good to be informative about the terms that you're using. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not a piece of propaganda. Yeah. It's a fun story of a really feisty girl in a very imaginative classroom. Well, great fun creating Miss the Teacher. <laughs> who, who gets dressed up as a caterpillar for the um, uh, 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 very hungry caterpillar for the uh, uh, book parade and you know we had a lot of humor in it too the way we did it was because Erska was involved in, uh, in the school at that time at the moment uh, she's on maternity leave but she's moved to Burundara which is a, a council library so she's not directly in the school anymore but it was very, very helpful in terms of her explaining the customs of the food, particularly halal, which I didn't realise had such wide implications. So I think the reasons for having a look at the book, I mean, it's a fun story, but yep. uh, it's really about friendships and how people get along together. And we, we've become friends in the process, which I think has been a bonus, particularly my... Um, my daughter and uh, Esco have become quite friendly and so we visited when her, her child was born and I said the gift to her was her first book maybe too because this <laughs> is her first book. It's my 201st but it's her first book and uh, uh, a book is a little bit like a baby. It has to go out in the world and grow up and eventually walk and uh, have a life of its own. So we hope <laughs> that uh, Hijabi Girl will do that but we've had a phenomenal response from a very positive response from the Islamic community and the book isn't even launched yet it's available from book pod but it's available as a print book or as an e-book which means it can travel into that internationally fairly quickly which is it is a good thing from our perspective so we have this vision that sometime there will be maybe a TV show with the hijabi girl TV series because we like all of our characters and we don't want to prefer one above the other. TV show does sound pretty exciting, actually. <laughs> you never know because the difference with, all right, for adults and for children, but writing in the children's area, a book can have a very, very long life. And I think we first started talking about the hippopotamus on the roof eating cake when I first met you. Yeah. And the hippopotamus is, is now 36, nearly 37, since the time our roof leaked and the, and the book was written and so on. And this year, there's a, a touring musical, Hippo Hippo, which I think comes to your area too. And so it's a theatrical production with music. Music. And so you never know how far a story will travel. I'll have to I'll have to take my kids to that. That sounds exciting. Oh, you have to. Yeah, it's got some great songs. It's a Gary Ginnivan production. And yeah. It's taken a little while to get it up, but uh, it's travelling nationally and it's going your way uh, between uh, early May and late August. It'll be travelling uh, nationally goes up as far as uh, Townsville, I think, in one direction, and uh, Alice Springs in the other, and through New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't get as far as Darwin, which is where my son lives, and he was the inspiration for the original hippo when he was four. Oh, no. He's a bit older than now. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go, I just, I just want to get back to the uh, some of the feedback you've received from Hijabi Girl. I think it is important that books reflect the real life the way it actually is and so to include Asian kids and, and black kids and kids in hijab it's just part of the rich 
smorgasbord of, of the way things really are and I think that should be reflected in the books. The issue with the hijab is that generally a girl doesn't wear a hijab until puberty but in some of the uh, schools that go from kindergarten through to um, year 12 it can be part of the school uniform so you may have children who are a bit younger and some who choose to wear it because as Gay explained this to me that she loved wearing it as a kid and so she wore it early so we're not saying it that everybody's got to wear a hijab we're not saying that at all we're just saying that there should be a yep. range of possibilities in any book and that's what we hope hijabi girl does when it comes down to it there is a diverse number of variations in the human race so it makes sense yes. that books and media should have a diverse number of variations as well yes i think so and and not just tokenism uh, we would hope just as when we did the f2m book of our character who transitioned gender we would hope that our character was of interest as a character who happened to be transitioning and this was part of a coming of age and in this one it's a really fun story with lots and lots of things happening it also deals indirectly with things like the bullying or the insults like why are you wearing your towel on your head do you ever wash your hair in the shower do you ever take it off have you got cancer all these sorts of things that kids do have to deal with because others don't necessarily understand that's why we've got four kids on the front cover we've got a very mischievous boy with a soccer ball and a reading rat called Rattus Rattus uh, and three other characters one of whom happens to have a hijab and if people uh, want to find out more about hijabi girl if they want to get the book themselves to read it how can they do that the book's available at most of the normal outlets it's uh, available directly from the publisher's book hod but if you go onto my website hazeledwards.com and click onto the easy reading section and you'll find Hijabi Girl page is the first one there and there are links to where it's available all over the place in both print and electronic form but what's useful up there I think is the fact that there are notes there for free that you can download the goals of activities that kids can do too including designing the print for your own hijab taking selfies and your favorite books on selfies and redesigning the classroom in an imaginary way to encompass other schools have reading dogs this school's got a reading rat. Thank you, Hazel. It's been a pleasure having yet another local chat with you. And this has been Local Chats. Uh, you can find this episode and other episodes at www.thenewlocal.net. And you can find us on Twitter at The New Local. Thank you.